For a very long time in the automotive world, it's been difficult to pinpoint and define what American luxury really is and what does it look like. Because for the last 30 years, we've seen the Germans and Japanese completely take over this market, whether it was sedans in the 90s or crossovers and SUVs in the 2000s. Now, of course, we have the Cadillac Escalade, maybe throw in the GMC Yukon and Lincoln Aviator, but are they really the best in their price ranges? And Americans have made it pretty clear that they're not. But then when you look at Tesla, Tesla has become American luxury in the EV world. So maybe there is an opening and an opportunity for American brands to reemerge in these markets. Now, Jeep is not going to be seen as a luxury brand, at least up until 2021. However, with the all new 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, things are about to take a major turn as we're taking a look at a vehicle that in my mind is going to reshape and redefine American SUVs moving forward. Now you're probably saying you cannot be serious that we're actually gonna compare a Jeep Grand Cherokee L to even a Cadillac Escalade. Now I am not saying that this is a Cadillac Escalade rival. However, the one I'm sitting next to right now is a Summit, which is priced around $60,000. When you take a look on the inside with the interior materials, the technology, and just the overall value this vehicle provides, it is not in the same category as its traditional rivals like Kia, Hyundai, Ford, and Chevrolet. This vehicle is selling a lot more, and that's why I am here to take a look at the new Grand Cherokee L to see where it fits in in its market and segment, but also, if it truly is an American luxury vehicle. Now, before I get into this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Central Jeep Chrysler and Dodge in Raynham, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to subscribe to Boston Auto Blog and also hit the notification bell to get notified when a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time. Let's get right in this review. It's been no secret that over time, crossovers have been getting larger with each passing generation, as consumers continue to demand elevated levels of class, interior room, and quality. Vehicles that would often be considered full-size SUVs have now become mid-size crossovers. But Jeep, doing what they know best, hopped on the trend of introducing a family-friendly and entry-level luxury SUV, while at the same time still staying true to their off-road and rugged heritage, despite the Grand Cherokee appearing to be their version of a Lincoln Aviator. With the crossover segments becoming more competitive and brands now offering vehicles that resemble Jeep's product line, it was only a matter of time before this SUV-dominant manufacturer would raise the bar even higher with a Grand Cherokee that just might be able to balance being off-road worthy, upscale, and family friendly, while at the same time being attainable. Starting off with pricing, the Jeep Grand Cherokee L in this review is a Summit, which comes in at just under $60,000 if you opt for the 4x4 model. In an effort to redefine the three-row SUV market, Jeep is offering a vast price range, where a base model can be purchased below $40,000, to go up against the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade, but on the higher end could be legitimately cross-shopped with an Audi Q7. Exterior dimensions are also going to play a deciding factor in the buying process for consumers, as the Grand Cherokee L is definitively longer than almost every competitor, including the Ford Explorer, which it outsizes by 6 inches in length. Compared to the outgoing generation, it's about 15 inches longer, but to be fair, Jeep will be releasing a two-row variant in the near future. Make no mistake about it, despite its premium exterior design, it's still off-road worthy with a minimum ground clearance of 8.5 inches, but with optional airlift suspension and in its highest setting, will provide almost 11 inches to give you the ability to ford through two feet of water. The biggest talking point for the 2021 model year is the upscale appearance Jeep gave the Grand Cherokee L as this is quite the departure from prior generations and could be seen as the baby Grand Wagoneer. After 10 years with the same design, this SUV is now reflective of the current direction three-row passenger crossovers are going in, which emphasizes classier aesthetics, but puts far more attention on being a family-friendly roadshow vehicle that can adapt to a variety of environments and situations, 
whether you're simply dropping the kids off at school or you're going on a weekend getaway. While the front fascia has cosmetic similarities to its predecessor, the design of the headlights and grille are done so in a way that exudes a sense of sophistication that quite frankly we've never seen before from Jeep. Moving over to the side profile, the Summit will be sitting on 20 inch aluminum wheels and despite the bigger tire size, I didn't notice them having a negative effect on ride quality and with the softer suspension, the Grand Cherokee L took on the bumps and imperfections relatively well. You'll have body color power folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, compared to last generation, the rear fascia is boxier to fit its new role as being a traditional three-row SUV. But also with the thinned out LED taillights, the Grand Cherokee L appears to be more upscale compared to prior model years. A minor aesthetic feature that adds some color contrast is the brushed aluminum trim that outlines the rear window and runs the length of the side profile. Also with the Summit, you'll have dual exhaust outlets integrated into the bumper, unlike on lower trims which are tucked away for a cleaner appearance. Under the hood, the Jeep Grand Cherokee L we have today is powered by a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine that puts out 293 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, but you will have the option to upgrade to a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8, which will give you 357 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque, and both engines are paired with the ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. While a bit more expensive, we recommend going with that V8 for better towing capacity, but also improved performance as well to spice up the driving experience. But keep in mind that the Grand Cherokee L is not going to be all muscle, and rather more of a luxury SUV to make daily commuting very pleasant. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive right around 14 miles per gallon in the city and 22 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you're greeted by 16 way power adjustable heated and ventilated Napa leather seats for both the driver and passenger including two position memory and massaging for both occupants up front. As you get your first look at the interior, this is a major leap forward for the Jeep brand as you have soft touch padding for the armrests and center console. But the infusion of technology is going to put the Grand Cherokee L in elite company as the design is European like. You have a full digital gauge cluster giving you the ability to customize what you see on the screen but also for a brand that we never looked at as being luxurious, has a display that offers good resolution and quality. With this Summit being equipped with the optional $2,000 Advanced ProTech Group Package, we have a head-up display and night vision with pedestrian and animal detection. And also like we see from German manufacturers, you can display the navigation map from this screen to provide a more modern feel. Our model also comes with a digital rear view camera to give you a clearer look at what's behind you. Then moving on to the infotainment system, you'll have a 10-inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and you'll have the option to upgrade to the 19-speaker Macintosh sound system. This is the new Uconnect 5 user interface that will be found in many Stellantis products including Maserati which we got our first taste of this head unit in the Ghibli earlier this year. Despite not having physical buttons to quickly get you to different menus, there will be dials for the volume and tuning found just below the screen. A few features that are embedded in the Uconnect 5 infotainment system and optional on our model is the fam cam, giving you the ability to check in on every second and third row seat in the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, which will be perfect for parents with multiple kids as they can now keep tabs on what they're doing and this feature will add a peace of mind as you're driving on longer road trips. You can also access your climb controls from this screen as well, or you can just use the buttons also found below. But it's from this menu where you can turn on the massage function to elevate the driving experience. With the Summit, you have a variety of camera angles to choose from to help park this SUV, including a top view, side angles, and front and rear cameras to ensure that you don't hit any stationary objects as you park on the street. Taking a glance below the screen, you'll have a wireless phone charging pad to go along with two USB and USB-C inputs and a 12-volt outlet. 
For the center console, you have your drive mode selector, with each off-road mode adjusting the ride height. And thanks to the airlift suspension, you can take on a variety of terrain and road conditions. For the center storage compartment, you have enough room for smaller items, including a water bottle or two. And rounding up the front seating area, above will be a massive panoramic sunroof to let in some natural light to the interior. Now for passengers in the second row, they're going to be living the life of luxury back here because you will have some soft touch padding for the armrest on the doors, also a nice center armrest as well, but also these caption chairs are pretty comfortable. They also slide forwards and backwards, giving you a good amount of legroom, especially if you have taller passengers up front or a taller driver. But also if you need to give the third row seats a bit more legroom, it's a win-win situation for everybody. But that luxury doesn't stop here. You will have dual zone climate control back here to go along with three level heated outboard seats, two rear air vents, also two USB-C and two USB inputs to go along with a three pronged outlet. This is fantastic. This is redefining American luxury, but also it is a throwback to what made American luxury brands do so well throughout the 60s, 70s, and early 80s because this vehicle is designed for long road trips. It's designed to go across country to California, but also this vehicle can do it all. You can take on the off-road. You can take on the snow or the pavement as well. And it's just really conducive for a growing family, whether you are going on that road trip or you're just taking a trip down to the park to drop off the kids at soccer practice. This vehicle is just all around perfect. And when you look at the pricing at around $60,000, that's phenomenal. You just don't see this amount of technology, but also uh, luxury features as well in this price range, especially for a brand that was never looked at as being luxury. Then of course you will have a center storage compartment, which isn't necessarily that big. You can probably fit a small iPhone or some smaller uh, items back here. And then of course you will have two cup holders. Now for the third row, this is rather doable, even though I'd rather be in the captain's chairs up front. If I was forced to sit back here, it wouldn't be that bad at all. Now, I'm around the height of 5'5", five, five, not the tallest person out there, but if you have kids around the age of 8 or 9 years old, they can sit back here and be pretty comfortable because shoulder room isn't that bad either. Uh, this is actually pretty spacious and a lot better than what I've experienced with other vehicles in this market. Now, just for reference, this is not as much legroom as you're going to experience in the Cadillac Escalade, but this is certainly better than some of the rivals. Also, you will have a center storage compartment for passengers in the third row. So if you have iPhones or iPads or anything that will keep your kids entertained, you can leave them back here. And that's just great to see, very intuitive. Uh, some vehicles don't offer that. So uh, I just think what Jeep has uh, designed here, what they've designed here is a vehicle that's certainly family friendly and conducive for a growing family. Also back here for both passengers, you will have a USB-C and USB input to go along with a cup holder and also a rear air vent. So uh, passengers back here will be nice and cool on a very hot day like today. But what I'm experiencing here, whether it was in the first row, the second row, or even back here, this is like a vehicle that's priced around $100,000. And that's why I think that this could most certainly be seen as an attainable luxury SUV and also an attainable Cadillac Escalade. Even though it's not as big, it's certainly conducive for a family, but also just what this vehicle is providing. It's a lot of value, especially at around $60,000. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate. And inside, behind the third row of seats, you're going to find right around 17.2 cubic feet of rear cargo space. And this is usable space. I was able to put all my camera gear back here with no problems at all. And for some vehicles do offer an optional third row, it can get a bit tight back here. Now, this would be middle of the road for its segment. So the Kia Telluride is going to offer around 21 cubic feet of room. But then take into consideration that the third row seats will be a bit tighter. So some vehicles do emphasize more cargo space over uh, the seating situation for people in the third row, whereas the Jeep Grand Cherokee L's length comes into play where you will have a good amount of legroom in the back, but also usable space where if you are going on a road trip with the family, you can fit uh, some bags of luggage. Also, you will have a small little compartment and cubby on the right for some smaller items. Also great to see on our model with the press of a button, you can automatically lower 
the third row seats. And with those third row seats folded, you're going to have right around 48 cubic feet of room to work with, which is on par and slightly better than some of its competition. So if you only have one or two kids in the second row, you're going to have enough room for camping gear or whatever else you're going to be carrying with you on a longer road trip. And just like with the third row seats, you can lower the second row seats with the press of a button as well. So no manual labor necessary at all. And then of course they do fold back up. So that's really great to see. And overall you're gonna have right around 84, 85 cubic feet of room to work with. So it's practical all around, but also these are features that we see with the Audi Q7 and other luxury brands. So uh, Jeep is really emphasizing luxury and convenience. And that's just great to see, especially for this new model year. Then beneath the floor mat, you will find an additional cubby and storage compartment for smaller items, maybe even electronics, uh, such as iPads or iPhones if you are going to the beach or maybe going hiking this time of year. Now also not equipped on this model, but I can see the indents for them is your rear cargo cover. So if you leave this vehicle unattended, you can leave all your stuff back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. So. Really, I like what Jeep is offering here with the Grand Cherokee L, and it's certainly family friendly. Now getting behind the wheel of the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, what you are gonna notice is that this vehicle has very luxury SUV-like qualities, specifically when it comes to the suspension, but also just the interior layout and the interior comfort. So these leather seats provide a good amount of support. They're not aggressively bolstered at all, which is to be expected, but they do have that level of refinement that you would be looking for in this price range. Also, you can turn on the massage feature and really enjoy yourself on a longer drive, especially right now after filming for the last four hours, this is really truly enjoyable, but also they're heated and ventilated as well. Now, if you were to cross shop this with say a Chevrolet Tahoe, just because the size kind of matches up, especially if you are looking at maybe a used Tahoe from a few years ago, is that this doesn't feel like a pickup truck. It feels like a crossover. Whereas the newer Tahoes that are built on the same platform as the Silverados are going to feel very pickup truck-like. Uh, and that's what I experienced with the Cadillac Escalade. And this actually is a bit more uh, traditional to what crossovers are like. Now getting into the interior layout for this vehicle, what I really like is the fact that we have a full digital gauge cluster and also a 10 inch touchscreen. Now this, you can definitely tell that the European styling is making its way into this SUV because the digital gauge cluster blows a lot of its competition out of the water, specifically the Ford Explorer, but also Chevrolet as well. Now the traditional rivals to the Grand Cherokee would be the Explorer, the Chevrolet Traverse, also the Kia Telluride, and also the Hyundai Palisade. And what I'm gonna say is, is that this vehicle kind of sets itself apart in many ways, not only because it's a bigger SUV, but also just when it comes to the interior quality and also the price point as well. I mean, you're looking at a price uh, for this particular model, which is a Summit at around $60,000. And most of its traditional rivals are gonna be priced around uh, 50,000 on the higher end. So this is a bit more expensive. And that's why I think some people are actually very willing to say that this could be a more affordable option if you are looking at saying a BMW X7 or even a Mercedes-Benz GLS. Now, I think that if you were to cross off this with an Audi Q7, that would be a very interesting rivalry and also a one-on-one -on -one comparison just because I think when it comes to around $60,000, you're receiving a lot more value at this price point. Ultimately, what this vehicle is going to emphasize first is luxury and refinement, even though Jeep is a brand that really focuses on the ruggedness of their SUVs, focusing on off-road capabilities. But when I look at the new Grand Cherokee L, especially on the higher end, you're not gonna have the plastic cladding. And I just don't see buyers going in this price range in this market and going off-road, even though you can do it with 11 inches of ground clearance when you are in those off-road modes. But it's that vehicle that can do it all. So you have all this space in the back where you can load up the kids and go on a long road trip. But also you have the luxury aspects, such as the heated seats for the second row, but also even uh, the dual zone climate control in the back, where it's that perfect road trip vehicle. It's just an all around perfect family crossover or SUV. I should say, this is not a crossover at all, but 
it, it's one that we haven't really seen much in this price range. And that's why I feel it could redefine American luxury, especially for the SUV market, because you would always look at the Cadillac Escalade. I think a lot of people just overlook uh, the Lincoln Aviator, but this changes everything up, especially if you do have a, a budget of around $60,000 and you're looking at three row SUVs from the European brands, even Japanese brands, I think this could go up with them. Now the model we have today is a V6, which is going to not be as powerful as the Hemi V8, but you can get up to speed pretty quickly, especially in the suburbs and on winding back roads. Obviously you're not gonna be running zero to 60 times around five seconds. That's not what this vehicle is designed for. However, this is a departure from what Jeep has been known to do with their vehicles, where this doesn't feel rugged at all. And I know that some people will say, well, you could test drive some of the lower trims in the lineup and you're probably gonna have more of a rugged experience just because you do have the plastic cladding, it looks a bit more off-road worthy, whereas this seems to be an SUV that is going to turn some heads that I think, especially at its price point, maybe go up against the Genesis GV80. The GV80 is seen as the poor man's Bentley Bentayga, but I like to think of the Grand Cherokee as being the poor man's Cadillac Escalade, especially at this price point, because you're looking at $60,000 and you're getting this technology and this interior comfort, that's pretty impressive. But also to me, it seems as though the Jeep with the Grand Cherokee L is making a statement that they're saying, we can offer you luxury without spending eighty or $9,000 on a three-row SUV because you could cross-shop this with an Audi Q7, even though the BMW X7 and Mercedes-Benz GLS are gonna be around $70,000 to start, you at least have that ability where you could save about $10,000 and get a vehicle that feels similar, especially when it comes to that technology. What I love about this vehicle too is that it's family friendly as well. You have the camera systems for the interior where you can see what's going on in every single seat uh, in this vehicle. So, you, you know, maybe you have, you have a newborn or, you know, you're a younger parent, you don't have to really freak out. You know, you can at least see what's going on back there, especially where the kids are getting themselves into trouble. You can at least, you know, see what's going on and say, hey, stop, I like that. Uh, this vehicle is just meant for the family. And that's why it totally seems very different from what Jeep has been known to do in the past. Now, one of the reasons why I think a lot of journalists are having a hard time trying to figure out where this vehicle sits in its market is because when you look at the competitors like the Ford Explorer, Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, or even the Honda Pilot, it's very difficult to sit there with a straight face and be completely serious and say that this vehicle competes with those brands and those vehicles because when you look at the length of 205 inches, this is almost the same size as a Chevrolet Tahoe. And really the Grand Cherokee is growing substantially in size to where I think it's now outclassing a lot of its traditional rivals. But then when you look at the price differentials, when you look at the pricing, this vehicle starts at $38,000 in the low end, but can go all the way up to mid 60s. And that puts it right in the same category as some luxury brands. And that's why it's very difficult to say that this will go up against the traditional non-luxury brands. Because when you look at the technology, when you look at the features, I think this is better than the Ford Explorer. This is better than a lot of the rivals. Now, I do think that fairly you could cross shop this with a Kia Telluride and also a Hyundai Palisade. The only difference though is that even though those two brands are gonna offer some luxury and comfort features, the length is gonna be the major issue because with the Grand Cherokee L, it's still about five to six inches longer, so it's going to give you more space in the third row. And that's why this is a traditional three row SUV, unlike a lot of brands that are trying to squeeze in that third row where you could fit smaller kids in the back, but it's just not conducive. This is really redefining American luxury in this market. And this could very well be a winner and game changer for Jeep, especially with the Grand Wagoneer coming down the road uh, soon. This is just telling everybody that, hey, we are here to offer an SUV lineup that's not only rugged, but also luxurious as well. Because when you look at what Ford is doing, where they're offering a Bronco, they're offering the Ford Explorer, they're offering a lot of vehicles that can now go up against Jeep one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Jeep has to move forward. They need to start a whole new era and chapter in their history. And going full on luxury is the best way to do that. 
But overall, this is an introduction to what Jeep is gonna be doing in the future. Also nice appetizer of what we can expect with the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Uh, but this is really an introduction to a whole new market and a whole new world for Jeep where they're now going to put themselves up against some rivals and some brands that they've never really competed against in the past. And I think for their first ever entry-level luxury SUV, they've done quite a good job. Now I do notice that the power does kick in around three to 4,000 RPM. That's really where you start getting that performance. I would like to see what the V8 is like, uh, just because with the Hemi, I think you have a lot more fun with it. Also when it comes to towing capacity, uh, the towing capacity is gonna be better with the Hemi. So if you are gonna be towing a boat or maybe even a camper, this would probably be the uh, not the option to go with with the V6. You're gonna wanna go with the V8. But I do think though for daily driving purposes, this is gonna be just fine for most people. But this is really enjoyable though. After 40 minutes of test driving this vehicle, it's pretty solid. It hugs the road pretty well for what it is. Now I am not gonna be on the highway for this review, so I can't really test out uh, the body roll, but uh, for daily driving purposes, I think this is gonna be perfect for most people. And also when you are comparing it to its closest rivals or traditional rivals, it's gonna have better features compared to say the Ford Explorer and also the Chevrolet Traverse. But overall, I'm really surprised, and I do think that this has lived up to the expectations. I just wouldn't say that it's a true rival to the BMW X7 or other luxury brands. I think that if you were to strictly compare it to, say, the Chevrolet Tahoe or GMC Yukon, that would be more of a fair comparison, especially where this is entering luxury territory. Just the way it drives, it doesn't feel like a BMW X7 competitor. So it's definitely straddling that line. And that's what I'm gonna say here. It's straddling a line between being luxury but also being attainable as well. And I think that's where I think Jeep is gonna do quite well with this vehicle at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, what are my final thoughts for the Jeep Grand Cherokee L? Well, this is a major leap forward for the brand, especially where Jeep has never really been looked at as building luxury vehicles. And some people are gonna be very loyal to the prior generations for the Grand Cherokee, but this is really where I think Jeep can turn some heads, but also grab some market share away from the luxury brands. I know some people who own luxury crossovers that are now looking at getting back into Jeep. And that says a lot, especially for a vehicle priced at around $60,000. Now, when it comes to the technology that we have here and just the interior layout, this is better than the traditional rivals like Chevrolet and Ford. This blows the Explorer and the Traverse right out of the water, especially with the digital gauge cluster, but also like the infotainment system as well. The fact that we find the same user interface in the Maserati Ghibli and Levante helps elevate the interior of the uh, Grand Cherokee far more. But also just the interior comfort, it's... I think it's better than the competition. Now, the only two vehicles that I think could give the Grand Cherokee some fits would be the Kia Telluride and also the Hyundai Palisade. The only problem though is that the Grand Cherokee outsizes them by around six to seven inches. And that's really where I think a lot of journalists have a hard time trying to figure out where this vehicle actually fits in because it outsizes every competitor in its class, but also when it comes to the traditional rivals like Toyota and Honda, it has better technology and a better interior as well. And I think that's why this vehicle leans more towards the luxury side of things, especially as price point around $60,000 for the summit. This could definitely go up against the Audi Q7. Then when it comes to the driving experience and driving dynamics, it's plush and enjoyable. The soft suspension and the airlift suspension makes it feel as though you're driving on a cloud. But also what I think a lot of buyers are gonna to love too is that if you are looking at say a Chevrolet Tahoe, you're gonna have that pickup truck feel with that SUV. Whereas the Grand Cherokee is built on a platform that makes it very uh, close related to the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. So it drives like a crossover, but has the size of bigger SUVs. So if you're not looking for that rugged feel and you're looking for more like a luxury experience, then go with the Grand Cherokee. And that's why I feel on the higher end, especially for the Summit, it's hard for me to look at this SUV as being one that's gonna go off-road and fording through rivers like it can. Even though it has that ability, I just see this being a family hauler, one that can go across the country for long road trips or you're going to the beach or the mountains this time of year. That's what this vehicle is designed for. Even though it has that rugged design and the ability to go off-road, 
I just don't think buyers who are looking to purchase an SUV at around $60,000 are going to do that. Sure, it can. I just think that uh, people who are looking at this particular price range and segment are going to go with uh, more of that luxury side and luxury driving experience and dynamics. And that's exactly what the Grand Cherokee L Summit is going to offer. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.